Okay, we're recording. Get at McGee. You may go ahead. Play. That's in touch. Element one, report. All present account for, sir. Element two, report. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Element one, fallen. How are you doing today, Cadet? Outstanding, sir. Where your t-shirt? You have your ID? Congratulations, you've received, you've earned 100% for today. Thank you, sir. How are you doing today, Cadet? Outstanding, sir. Professional wear, everything looks good. You've earned 100% for today. Thank you, sir. How are you doing today, Cadet? Outstanding, sir. Wearing your t-shirt, belt, everything looks good. You've earned 100% for today. Thank you, sir. I didn't say good Outstanding, out. sir. Um, you haven't received your booze yet? No, sir. Um, you look good. Uh, you've earned 100% for today. Thank you, sir. I didn't say good Outstanding, sir. You look good in your booze. Everything looks good. You've earned 100% for today. Thank you, sir. I didn't say good Outstanding, sir. Everything looks good, sir. I don't have rank, I haven't got my A4 rank yet, sir. Alright, um, get it for next time. Element two, let's send hut. Element two fallen. That's <coughs> nowhere. Looks good. Outstanding, sir. <laughs> Thank you, cadet. <laughs> you earned 100% for the day. Thank you, sir. How are you doing today, cadet? Outstanding, sir. So have you not received your ranks? No, they need to order more, sir. All right, you've earned 100% for today. Thank you, sir. How are you doing today, cadet? Outstanding, sir. You've earned 100% for today. Thank you, sir. Element leaders, fall out to inspect your flight command, Vice Sergeant. How are you doing today, Cadet? Outstanding, sir. Good. Where's your ID, Cadet? It's in my wallet, sir. It's in my back pocket, sir. You need to have it off. Um, Give or take off 5%, so that's uh, take off one and a half points for that out of 30. He needs to have it visibly displayed at all time, guys. All right, you get 25% for the day, Cadet. How are you doing today, Cadet? Outstanding, sir. Element two, fall out. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, guys, welcome. Uh, today is 9 11, 2012. Uh, I'm going to dispense with our normal, normal uh, aerospace science uh, book instruction, which we're probably on about lesson two or three. Uh, but I'm going to go over some 9 11 history and talk about not necessarily my experience with 9 11, although <laughs> you guys want to get me off of the subject. I'll be glad to do that someday. But I'm going to talk more about the history of 9-11 uh, because I believe it's important for your generations to know the who, what, where, when, why of 9-11 just like I learned about Pearl Harbor from people who were there. And uh, you can then learn from 9-11 about some of my experiences as well as, as the uh, getting over the internet hoaxes and the conspiracy theories that uh, honestly they did not necessarily surround <laughs> Pearl Harbor because we didn't have the internet then. But now it seems like with all the uh, technology, everybody has a different opinion about what happened. So uh, today we're going to go over who, what, where, when, why of 9-11. Please ask questions. I'm going to show you uh, a couple of videos and, and uh, actually some of the information from the web so that we can actually see some of the graphic pictures that, that you, have, you guys have seen. And we'll talk about uh, why we were attacked, exactly who attacked us, some of the history behind it. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, yes, it was terrible that, what, 2,700 people or so died, but you know what, a lot more people could have died. Why didn't they die? I mean, each, each, I think each World Trade Center had about 20,000 people working in it. You know, if we had 40,000 people there, you know, potential death, how come only 2,700 died? And, uh, and then, We'll talk about the actually how they did it and why they did it and uh, how a lot of times we were lucky on it, okay? Um, let's see if I can call up my content here. Let's see here. Uh, excuse me, I have a little uh, connection problem here. My bad, my bad. Um, okay, while well, I'm doing this, who here remembers 9-11? How many of you guys remember 9-11? A few? Uh, let me ask a question then, Cadet Brunel. Um, what exactly happened on 9-11? What happened on 9-11? Planes crashed into the World Trade Center. Planes crashed into the World Trade. Did they crash anywhere else? The Pentagon and into the ground. <laughs> Pentagon ended to the ground in uh, Pennsylvania. So there were, is that, is that right? There were four planes involved. Is that right? Oh, I'm having a great time today. I don't have the technology. Yes. It was a terrorist attack on Twin Towers. Um, one, one crashed into the Pentagon, and then another was on its way to the, I believe, the White House. Okay. Crashed on its way there, because the because the actually passengers actually uh, stopped the from attack the terrorists on the planes. Those are, they were still in the air. Yes, and that is exactly the truth. It uh, it ended up having a situation where. Uh, some regular citizens, you know, saved it. Flight 93, sir? Flight 93. Okay, I'm having uh, problems bringing up the uh, actual content video. So you're going to have to go with my, my views here. But, first of all, why were we attacked? Why were we attacked? Who knows that? Yes, sir. The terrorists wanted to scare us, so they wanted to strike fear into our hearts. Why? Because we made them afraid, sir. We scared them, so they wanted to scare us right back. This is a horrible picture. <laughs> is that supposed to be a place? This is a horrible picture. Okay, the answer is maybe. Okay, maybe you're right. Uh, the real reason that we were attacked by 9-11 started in Gulf War One, Desert Storm. Okay, this is in 1990. 
uh, way before you guys were born. There is a country, and this is a horrible picture, okay, don't get me wrong. This is Saudi Arabia, okay? This is Africa, okay? This is Iraq, and I really can't do it exactly right, but this is Iraq, all right? There was a little small country, very small, as big as our counties in America, called Kuwait, okay, right here. And Kuwait had a lot of oil, was very, very rich, because they had the oil fields with the Gulf, okay, coming up, and Iraq, this country, thought that they should own Kuwait. It would be like, it would be like uh, California breaking off from America, and America saying, well, you know what, we really should own California because they're so rich. So basically, in a four, day re four day term, the ruler of Iraq, who was Saddam Hussein, invaded Kuwait and truly overran it and wiped it out. I mean, raped and pillaged and broke into the banks and took all the gold, took all the cars, wiped out this country that was as big as our county. Okay? It was very, very rich. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was quick. There was no, no stopping it. I mean, how quick would it be for us to drive down to Phoenix? I mean, it was like, just like that. Okay? And so, everybody in the world was scared that Saddam would come straight down into Saudi Arabia, which had more money and more oil, right? The majority of our oil comes from Saudi Arabia. But he stopped, he hesitated, because he was so happy, and probably his, his, his army was going so crazy in uh, you know, taking over the country and having a good time, okay, that he paused. When he paused, the king of Saudi Arabia invited the American forces, the American troops, to come to his kingdom in Saudi Arabia and defend it. Okay? And so we flew. I did not personally do it, but very good friends of mine, my, my squadrons, flew and actually set up airfields in Saudi Arabia. There are two other countries over here, Oman, Somalia. You heard of that? And, and we actually had some planes in, in other places other than Saudi Arabia. But we were invited into Saudi Arabia. Yes, can I ask? It was not just America, wasn't it? It was also a coalition. NATO, and this NATO is and correct. Countries. And this is Papa Bush. This is Daddy Bush, the first Bush. He actually got together a coalition of, of Arabs, Arabs for the first time ever, to fight another Arab, which was amazing. And he did an incredible job. Desert Storm 1 was an amazing thing. But what I'm trying to get to you is America was invited to be here in Saudi Arabia and stop Hussein. And then what happened for Desert Storm? What was the end result of Desert Storm? Iraq's military was crushed. Yes. We invaded Iraq and wiped them out in the quickest, most bloodless war ever. Okay? Because their military was already occupied in Kuwait, sir. Correct, and we pushed them out. We wiped them out, and we, you'll go over that in our in our uh, year this year. But the point was, the reason we were attacked for 9/11 was because we had American non-Islam people in Saudi Arabia when the radicals, Islam is the religion, Muslim are the people. Okay, you can't, there's no such thing as a Muslim religion. It's Islam. Islam is the religion. Muslim are the people. And their radical Islam interpretation is that no infidels, which are non-religious people, non-Islamic people, should be in Islamic country. And Saudi Arabia is an Islamic country. That's where Mecca is. That's, that's the Vatican City of the Catholic world is Mecca. 
every religion has radicals, okay? Um, I have Catholic friends that are very strict, and they kind of don't like the fact that I go to their Catholic church every now and then, because I'm not Catholic, I'm Christian, okay? I have, uh, maybe some of you, Muslim, uh, Muslim, LDS Mormon, okay? If I'm not LDS Mormon, I can't go in the temple in Salt Lake City. I mean, there, there are different rules for every religion, okay? And this Islam interpretation was very strict and said, you cannot be an infidel in my Islamic Muslim country. And so the radicals got real mad, okay? Uh, not any, you know, you, you know, you shouldn't hate all Muslims. Now, does, it, does everybody, let's see, during the Bosnian War, we had the Christian Serbians raping and killing and wiping out to this day, actually, Muslim innocent people. Do we hate all Christians just because they had some crazies that were radicals? No. Same difference. So these radical Muslims wanted us out of here. And so when this happened, pretty soon, Osama bin Laden and his al-Qaeda organization said, we want the infidels out of Saudi Arabia. We're going to attack America until they leave. And that absolutely is documented. 9-11 was that the first attack against us? No, sir. No. Well, give me a no. Uh, my mom actually said there was a previous attack on the World Trade Center, and but it was very not smart. nearly as uh, devastating. It just kind of surprised everybody. Exactly, and we'll get there. That's exactly right. We, they had attacked. They had said, we're going to attack the World Trade Center because it's the symbol of America's wealth and being an infidel. But uh, they attacked it and lost before, but this time on 9-11, they attacked it and won. Yes, sir. To add to that, sir, I'm pretty sure it was the attack on the parking garage. They set bombs at the gates of the parking garage, but they didn't really do anything. That's them. exactly right. They actually put a bomb in a truck underneath the World Trade Center. It went off, low order, scared a lot of people. And what happened to everybody in the World Trade Centers? But what did they do? They, they evacuated. No, they left. They went away. They had a huge fire drill. This happened years ago, and they actually caught the person, put him in jail. But because of those fire drills, when 9-11 happened, 20,000 people at each, each building, only 2,700 died. It's because they had been doing fire drills. They were scared. So the failures of those before actually helped those living. You don't know who's living because it's kind of, it's kind of amazing. Yes. Wasn't there a uh, bombing in, it was either like Kentucky or Indiana, at, I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Timothy McVeigh was, was, that's, that's, yes, sir, that's was a was. radical Christian who wanted to kill the government. He ended up killing, unfortunately, a uh, nursery full of kids. And so that was very sad, about 200 or but so. Not, not really. And so again, you don't hate all Christians because <laughs> he was a radical Christian that went crazy. I don't believe you should hate all Muslims just because we had some radical Muslims who went crazy. So it's a, that's a good example. That's a good example. Okay, so this is why we were attacked. Many years prior, they were mad that we are in Saudi Arabia. Okay, next. How were we attacked? How were we attacked? Yes, Cadet Aslan. From the air. From the air. I'm going to try to see if I can get this back up here again. Come on, baby. Don't know. Okay. Uh, the reason we were attacked from the air is, and I'm going to have to reconstruct this, this is the East Coast, this is West Coast, this is Boston, New York City, Washington, D.C. And this is not to scale, obviously. Okay, so yes, we took a car bomb. They tried to wipe out the World Trade Center. Did not work. He had another plan to do an attack from the air. I talked about this in a previous class. You guys can't understand. Has anybody flown recently and seen all the security you got to go through for uh -huh. security? You got to take your shoes off, right? Guess what? Prior to 9 11, you didn't have to do that. Yes, sir. Uh, would you also able to bring like a certain inch blade on? You could do any of that. As a kid, just a second, as a kid, when I was your age, 
you could walk straight on a plane, completely legal. If you were a plumber or a worker, you'd take your tools on, take your golf clubs. I used to take my golf clubs on planes. It was completely legal. Until about mid-70s, when I was about, I'm truly your age, 17, 16, 17, there had a spat, a bunch of hijackings. And somebody would bring a gun and point it at the, the pilot and say, take me to Cuba. This is on the East Coast, this is the South. And they fly to Cuba, and he'd pick up his families, and they fly back to Miami, and everybody would be safe. Never anybody hurt. You know, just hijackings. And almost it was weekly. It was quick. So guess what? If I'm using a gun to do that, what would you do if you were in charge of the FAA? Guns. Well, they created something very sophisticated. It was really amazing. It blew everybody's mind. It was called a metal detector. <laughs> and that was the biggest, coolest technology of the time. <laughs> and a metal detector, you had to walk through it, and it would go, Boos. oh, I'm carrying a gun. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> um, to gag. But I'm pretty sure if someone tried to sneak a gun onto a plane, they wouldn't just be like, here you go. I'm sorry, well, that was wrong. Previously, it was no big deal. Nobody ever thought about it. They started to have guns, they had a metal detector. And I remember as a kid, y'all's age, I go, man, that's amazing. It can look inside your body and tell me whether or not there's some metal there. And that was really cool. And so everybody felt very safe in planes. Could you bring knives on board? Sure, not a gun. Could you bring box cutters on board? Yes. Hey, I work for Walmart at night. I open up, I got my own box, set of box cutters. I got to take that over to my new job in Los Angeles. You can do all this stuff. No big deal. Yes, sir. For example, if you have like a metal leg with the metal detector go off. Of course. Like, yeah. Pocket, you guys of can't. course. And you actually have, it would have a little metal uh, pass and they, they, go, they knock on it or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, my point is prior to 9-11, you guys cannot understand how slack the security was. The planes would be flown and the pilots would keep the doors open because it was kind of claustrophobic and the pilots liked to talk to the, the, the passengers and the flight attendants. It was, it was good advertising for the planes to have the pilots up there smiling. Hey, come on up here. Little son, you want to come up here and let me show you the instruments? Come out here and look. And they would leave the, the doors open to the Pilots when they're flying. What we do? Why would you not? So when Saddam Hussein was creating this, not Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden was creating this target of the World Trade Center, they realized that we had a lot of insecurity problems. And so they basically put up teams that would go and fly two to four, okay, and they would get on planes. And they actually flew these flights, you realize, beforehand. I mean, they flew the flights and checked out that, yeah, I can bring a box cutter right here in my pocket. Anybody gives me, hey, I'm sorry, I work at Walmart. I, I, yeah, no big deal. I got my knife, no big deal. People do it. It's completely legal, and they flew these flights before. Why did the attacks happen on 9 11? Um, wasn't it a significant date in the Muslim culture? No, I have never heard of that one. I heard one of you guys at the ceremony this morning. Talked about it. Wasn't it because of 911, our emergency call? I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with any of those internet hoaxes. The reason was there was actually a big storm that just passed through the Northeast, and guess what? It was a beautiful, beautiful day. A perfectly beautiful day. Crystal clear. That's unusual in the East because you have lots of clouds and humidity, but you could see 100 miles away. So when we have these terrorists that have been trained to fly a plane but not land one, <laughs> when you fly a plane but not land one, they got to be able to look out the window and see the target. They can't navigate using instruments like professional pilots do. You got to be able to look out and see. There's the World Trade Center. That's where I'm going. Yes, sir. So basically, once they take off, that means they're dead. Like, that means they, the, they actually went to flight schools. Minnesota? They didn't learn how to land. They didn't need to. They went to flight schools and were paid. They were paid to kill themselves? Yes. Well, they weren't paid. The families were paid. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, in, the, they paid. In, the, in, the, in the radical Islam religion, if you die in a war against the non-Islam people, you then go to heaven.
Okay, so these, these terrorists were convinced they were going to heaven and their families were taken care of. And in a poor culture, having your families taken care of is, is a good reward. I read something that they have like a ladder and like uh, suicide and that kind of thing that like gets you 14 steps up that ladder. I don't know. I'm not Islam. I have no idea. I'm just telling you why they did it, okay? I mean, these are radicals. Why did Timothy McVeigh blow up a bunch of kids as a Christian? You know, I, bet, I don't know. And uh, about what you're saying about the airport security being really lax, um, a few years ago I went to China on a trip, and overseas in China, the security systems for the uh, to get on the planes were so much more lenient. You didn't have to take off your belt. You well, they haven't had a 9-11. You can okay. keep your shoes on and all that. And again, that. you don't have any idea. What you saw is still so much more than prior to 9-11. But I was really surprised at how lax and lenient it was. Every country runs their show, right? <laughs> so the way they did was they had two guys learn how to fly planes. They did them, I believe, in Florida, Minneapolis, I'm pretty sure, and actually Phoenix. They had some flight. And they spread these kids out, these uh, Arabs, out all over America, gave them cash, Learn how to fly, you'll learn how to fly, you'll learn how to fly, you don't have to learn how to land. And believe it or not, there were two American instructors who were teaching these guys who actually thought, hmm, it's kind of weird that these guys don't want to learn how to land. <laughs> and they don't speak English that well, and they're paying me cash. Does that make sense? And actually it happened that uh, one of these flight instructors in Minneapolis reported it to the FAA. And he said, this does not make sense. I think there might be some terrorists or something. And one person said, nah, it's no big deal. So we had the chance to stop this in many different ways. It's just like any other accident you have, driving or, okay. you know, or no, snowboarding. Well, I'm just saying, a professional instructor knows what a flight student is supposed to be like, and these guys are not like that. Yes, sir. Is it also true that one reason we didn't stop it is because the CIA, which had been trailing them for almost two years, failed to really share anything with the FBI? Okay, I think that's internet hoax. I have buddies in the CIA and the FBI, and I know that happened. I have buddies who worked for the president at the time, and that didn't happen. There was plenty of information going, just that we didn't put the individual parts together. There's a lot okay. of internet Okay, and all so that. now you see how they got on board. They immediately, uh, once they took off, they ended up attacking the pilots, just walked right in there and killed them with box cutters, okay? A lot of bad stuff going on. Dead people in the alleyway, kind of upsets everybody. They take over the plane and they turn around and they go and they can see for 100 miles the World Trade Center and they go and target the World Trade Center. 2,700 people die. Were they all Americans? No, sir. How many countries had people die that day? This four, sir. Four? At least. How many? How many people? I mean, World, World Trade Center had 90 countries had people die well, that day. <laughs> 90 countries had people die in the World Trade Center. Okay? So there was not an attack against just America. This was an attack against the world. It was unbelievable. Uh, okay, so they attacked. We had two planes that took off from Boston. Right after they took off, they were hijacked, and they turned around and came in and wiped out the two towers in New York City. Was Boston security lax and miserable? No, it was just like the rest of America. It was normal, okay? I mean, Boston's a big city, okay? Uh, another plane took out of Washington, D.C. Took out, got hijacked, came right back in, attacked the Pentagon. Yes, sir. Uh, funny story about that. I think it was uh, you or someone else that told me about this. If they had hit um, a different side of the Pentagon instead of the side they had hit, I believe it was a side closer to the river on one, on one of those sides of the Pentagon, they would have wiped out all the commanding officers of the Air Force, of the Army, of all the left terrorists. Okay, that's exactly <laughs> that's right. That's what I was told. I mean, that's, I mean they, they would have, like, taken out 15 commanding officers and, and, then, and then we would have just been lost. Okay, here we go. This is a, a bad picture of the Pentagon. Okay? It's a bad picture of Washington, D.C. This is the Jefferson Memorial. This is the Capitol building. This is the White House. 
This is the uh, Washington Memorial, and then the Lincoln is here. Okay. I used to work in the Pentagon. I used to work right here on this corner over here. So just like Cadet Carroll said, the leaders of America's military are right here. Okay, they got the beautiful view out over the, the, the Potomac. Beautiful view. Secretary of Defense, Army, Air Force, Navy. Secretary of four, four stories here, actually five, but they're the leaders. The actual target in D.C., what would you target in D.C. if you wanted to wipe out America? Right there. The White House. What else? Uh, where are the commanding officers? The commanding officers of the Pentagon. What else? Yeah. Pewter. Jefferson Memorial is going to wipe out America? <laughs> yeah, it might wipe out a couple of janitors. <laughs> a couple of love birds. Uh, no, I would take out the Capitol building, the White House, the Pentagon. Okay? So, unclassified, uh, this plane that came back into Washington, D.C. did not go straight to the Pentagon. He kind of wobbled around. And actually, I, 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 have, I have this briefing that I've given to my cadets the previous year that I couldn't find it. But he came, and he actually did like a couple circles here. It was almost as if he couldn't find his target. He didn't know what the White House was. And was the weather bad? No, it's beautiful. It's like Google Earth, okay? <laughs> and he was sort of searching for his target, and then... Again, he had never flown a plane other than a Cessna, and he's flying, and it is going 400 miles an hour. Oh, by the way, when you're turning a plane at 400 miles an hour, it's a lot different than turning a plane at 100 miles an hour. So aeronautically, if you turn a plane at 100 miles an hour, it turns like this. When you turn a plane at 400 miles an hour, it doesn't turn very fast, okay? So there's some speculation that he missed his target. And he came over here, and the Pentagon is very, very visible, as is these other places. Don't get me wrong. The Capitol is a big white building, and White House. Uh, white House, you can't see, honestly, as much, because it's below the trees. The Pentagon is on open field. Well, it's open, and also there's a big airport called Washington National. There's a huge airport over here, okay, right near the Pentagon. But this guy ended up coming through and attacking the Pentagon from the opposite side. He missed his target. If he would have hit the target on the side with all the leaders, that would have been better for their attack. Yes, sir. Um, if you're still, if you're working in that building at the time on that same area, would you have been hit or hurt by the plane? Um, no. It was it was away from me. It was an army section of the Pentagon. Most of the people who died were army. I have a cousin who was a. Uh, Navy fighter pilot who was there at the time, and he actually went through a lot of the rescue uh, procedures. And, uh, and the Pentagon is actually five buildings nested inside of us. It's actually five pentagons inside of each other, connected by hallways. So it didn't go through the whole building like you see in the World Trade Center. It went and stopped. He actually hit, this is actually a road. There's a road here. And he actually clipped part of the road and sort of rolled into it. He just didn't go whack into it. He clipped and sort of, you know, went into it. Yeah, he got different. It with it, but yes, sir. Is it, I heard on a TV episode once that the reason so few people died in the Pentagon is because the part that was hit had recently undergone renovation. And no, I think that's true. Yeah, the whole Pentagon was being renovated one, one fifth at a time, and so it was it did have a little bit more uh, security. But, but again, the plane did not just hit it straight on. It sort of rolled into it. So Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, is it true that when the plane hit the Pentagon that the wings just vanished? Well, they, they, they fell wings? off because they were knocked off prior and went yeah, straight into the mess. But they couldn't find them? No, no, it's all there. I mean, what do you mean find them? It's a, it's a know, big it's mess. It might have been... They couldn't find, what, 450 people either out of the wall. You know, they're incinerated. It's just so much, you know, it's incinerated. The, the body of the plane went into the, that's the picture you see, is the body of the plane in there. Because they didn't hit it straight here. They hit here, clicked off the wing, and the body sort of slid into the Pentagon. Yes, sir. Did, if that, if so many important people were in the Pentagon, why wouldn't they protect it more and put it, like, underground or secret place? Because we built that in 1945. 
And we built it in around eight months, and that's what happens. All the pit, all the TV shows you see with the big screens and the guys sitting there controlling the world, that is underground. <laughs> but that is right here in this part of the Pentagon, you know, away. And again, like I said, these are five, five uh, buildings inside of each other. So if you could burst through one building, that's awesome. But it didn't burst through five. And you can get through five. Okay. Of them. It like I said, it didn't hit it. Those on. Okay, so here's the other question. So we had another build, another plane, another plane that took off, Washington D.C. got as far as Pennsylvania, and they got hijacked. But they were the last one, and they came around, started heading towards D.C. People on the plane goes, "Huh, oh, this doesn't make sense. We're heading east. We're supposed to go in L.A." And so they got on their phone, cell phone, started calling up. They talked to their parents and go, "Are there?" Wise, and she goes, Oh, yeah, D New York has been attacked and DC is burning. And all of a sudden, <laughs> we're heading east, DC is burning. and we're <laughs> heading east instead of heading west. <laughs> and so, what happened was these people in this, this flight knew they were hijacked and knew they were going to probably be martyred to be killed by hijackers. And so, I think there were four, three uh, guys who knew martial arts, one in particular. And they tried to take back over the plane, United Flights 93, and unhijack it. And in doing so, they had a fight in the cockpit, and everybody died in Pennsylvania. And they crashed in a cornfield in Pennsylvania. How did they crash? I mean, don't you think one person would have had some sort of. The cockpit is tight. A cockpit is this big. You put four people over there fighting over the controls, and all the. All the terrorists have to do is push it to the ground and it goes well, to the ground. Sir, don't you think that's kind of like a coincidence it fell into such a perfect location on a cornfield? Have you ever been in Pennsylvania? Western <laughs> Pennsylvania is a farmland. <laughs> Amish country. You ever been to Western Pennsylvania? If, you ever, if any plane in Arizona were to crash, it would land in nowhere because you know, there's nothing in Arizona. Arizona is pretty unpopulated. It's a desert. Yeah, it's, it's a, you know, that is really a coincidence that it landed in the desert and didn't kill anybody in Arizona. My God. Arizona is a desert. It's 80% desert. All the parts of Pennsylvania are very popular, like Philadelphia and uh, parts of it. So I really consider these people in United Flight 93 true heroes to choose to you know, give their life to protect the country. This flight, there are different theories that I've heard in a, in a formal situation, but many people think that this guy's target was the Capitol, and the second guy's target was the White House. Was President Bush in the White House when this happened? Where was he? He was in a elementary school reading to kids in Florida. I mean, his, his wife, Mrs. Bush, was an elementary school librarian, I'm pretty sure, so they were really big into education. Cool. So he was actually in Florida when all this happened. The Vice President Cheney was in the White House and actually had a pretty tough decision. Because when this happened, Vice President Cheney went underground <laughs> and protected all the people, and all of a sudden he got information that it was an inbound flight to D.C., a hijack. There have been three attacks so far. Here's another one. Let's say, let's pretend you're Vice President Cheney. Vice President Cheney, inbound flight. We got 272 Americans on board coming to DC. We've already had three attacks, three terrorist attacks. This has been hijacked. Do we have the authority to shoot down American citizens? So you're going to let these 273 people, these crazy, Hijackers come out and wipe out thousands of people, wipe out the heart of the government of the most powerful country in America, wipe out you, kill you. What would you do as vice president? Shoot down the plane for the greater good. Shoot down the plane for the greater good? I I actually agree with him because I heard, heard according to what I've read, that had it come to DC, it likely would have been shot down. Because I heard they would have heard Okay, so you're going to sacrifice 273 people who, oh, by the way, you think you're going to get elected, re elected as vice president when you go shooting down American citizens? If it's saved, no matter how you were saying it, sir, they would have. They would have called you a murderer. They would have said, oh, you killed 273 people. Yeah, they would to have save said tens of thousands. Wrong. 
so whether you let them the live or not. They made about this flight that there was actually a they did make money with it. it. Shh, I can't hear it. One person, go ahead. Uh, I saw a movie that had jets flying with it, so like alongside it. Okay, that's false. Okay, because I was in the control pole because they had all these jets. Uh, so a lot of the internet hoax. I'm, I can't, don't have time today to go through all the details of the military. I will. The bottom line was this plane was by itself. We did not have the capability to shoot down. And why did we not have the capability to shoot down? Because we had no alert fighters with real missiles ready to shoot over Washington, D.C. at this time. Uh, and I, again, I've heard it both ways when I Cheney actually said shoot it down. Or he could say shoot it down, but guess what? We didn't have the capability. It was still kind of like that. Thing. But it, he would have said shoot it down, and all of a sudden, the, the, next, the next picture on the thing is the White House going poof, you know? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I thought I heard once that there, at the time it was coming towards DC, there were F 16s going to set up a perimeter. Exactly right. And that's what you hear. There are F 16s up there. Yay! Does every F 16 have live missiles over no. real populated yeah. area ready no. to shoot missiles? No. They had guns. And guns are about 225 rounds, it goes 6,000 rounds a minute, and all they need to do is just, they wouldn't even be lucky to hit the whole What was the caliber on the rounds, sir? We have 30 millimeter guns. 30 millimeters? Yes. What if you hit the engines? No. You I mean, it's blood. not going to happen, guys. The guns are not going to shoot down a plane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you think there would have been more hijacks had, had they didn't, if they did not stop all airplanes? Yes. And I think this is I think this is quite public that there were other other uh, probable attacks in America, and one of the gutsiest moves I've ever heard, as far as a leader, you elect these guys, you pay them the big money to make tough decisions, like bombing Nagasaki and Hiroshima. We talked about that, but all of a sudden we've had three attacks. Vice President Cheney, what are you going to do? Shut down every American airport. Land Once every plane in the United it's States. It's never happened. Oh, planes halfway to Europe had to turn around and let them back. I'm telling you, he made a gutsy gut and the FAA administrator, who I don't really know his name, but I told him that's a gutsy call, never before done, and I truly think they saved lives. How did that? They shut down every every how minute of every day, every minute of every day. How many people are airborne over America? Thousands. Millions. Over a hundred thousand. Every minute, every second, every day. And one person goes, land them, shut them down. And that saved that. And nobody ever done that. That was amazing. That was amazing they call. Land all those airplanes like they immediately land. land. You say, hey, land. Yeah. You're, you're number 27, land. Number okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and oh, by the way, I'm running out of, if you're running out of gas, <laughs> if you're running out of gas and you declare an emergency, you're still only number seven. You've got seven other emergencies in front of you. Yes. You said that um, the fighters couldn't shoot down any airplanes because they only had guns. But I've read that some pilots were willing to crash their fighters into the airliners to stop them. That's an internet hoax. Okay. We had never done this before. Nobody even knew. And oh, by the way, the there's no communication from President Cheney to the fighters. There was no capability of such. Okay. Matter of fact, let me cover that. Uh, let me see if I have it here. In America, here's a good question. Why, why did we allow this to happen? Why couldn't we just shoot all these planes down? We didn't have capabilities. Yeah, exactly. Who were the bad guys in the Cold War? Russia. Russia. And so, here is America. Okay. This is California. <laughs> this is Alaska. This is D.C., uh, New York City. We had 14 planes sitting alert, ready to shoot down the bad guys. Who are the bad guys? Russia. Russia. Planes coming down from this way. So we had radars and planes looking out from America like this. And actually, when we get, if you guys want to bother me another time, I'll tell you about what I was doing this day. I was in a command post where we actually had an exercise going on, and our exercise was to defend ourselves against bad Russian people coming down this way, okay? And so, in one time, to show you the response of the American military, 14 planes, at 9 o'clock in the morning we got attacked, I think it was 14 hours, in 14 hours, we had over 300 planes alive, airborne, with real missiles, over populated centers, ready to shoot them. Never before happened before, it'll never happen again. So the point is, previously, yes, we did have some planes airborne. 
Yes, we did have uh, buddies that I knew come from Otis Air Force Base in Boston who actually flew real F-15s over the World Trade Center. Matter of fact, I talked to one of them. He said, I was up over the World Trade Center. It was burning, but it wasn't that bad. I was looking right down the corners. It was straight as there. He had thought, man, it kind of looks like it might fall. But he was looking right straight down there. Looked exactly right. He was just looking at it. Go, man, this is straight as an arrow. And all of a sudden, he realized it was falling away from him. So with all those pictures, you see the World Trade Center falling. That was an F-16 buddy. He went straight down. So he was looking. He was thinking to himself, there's no way it's going to fall. It's not twisted. You know, the guy didn't hit it. Twisted. It was straight down. And he looked out. And he saw the whole thing fall away from him. But so we had live fire. It, it was over New York City. Over, it was collapsing inward. Yeah, I'm going to say it wouldn't twist it, though. When you a big plane hits a, pl a building, you think the building would twist or jar. It looked perfect to him. He saw it. Uh, yes. As bad as an incident it was, everyone's really lucky that it actually did collapse in on itself instead of collapsing. It was a perfect day. There was no wind. It was a beautiful day. Guys, we've got 30 seconds. Let's continue this conversation. If you all want to ask questions, you can do it. I need to knock it off for now. Uh, Thursday, look for lesson two and three. And let me get everything gone here. There's the plane. Go ahead and just 